What in the world is going on? It is the first week of November, and all of a sudden, out of nowhere, a hurricane just magically appears in the Atlantic Ocean and starts heading westward toward southern Florida. More specifically, Mar-a-Lago. Yeah, that's right. Go look at the spaghetti models. They are in virtual 100% agreement. The line for this hurricane takes the eyewall directly over the residence of Donald J. Trump. Now, I'm sure there's a lot of folks out there that are going to have a field day with that. But before we get too much farther into this, I always want to be diligent. And I want to say thank you to everyone who continues to join us over at the Florida Maquis Patreon channel. This is going to be a very busy week, this election week. There are going to be a great many media outlets that are going to turn up the military-level psychological operations. After what happens tomorrow, they are going to be pointing fingers. And it's not going to be at the economy. Oh, they're going to say, yeah, that's part of it. But they're going to blame you. They're going to blame the American people and basically say, in so many words, that you're just too stupid to figure out what is good information and what is not. Because if you were as smart as they are, you would be able to see right through it and you wouldn't have done what you've done to destroy democracy. That's what they're going to do tomorrow. And they're going to continue to do that. And they're going to rile up a bunch of people. And they're going to give them the moral imperative excuse to go out and do things they wouldn't normally be able to do. Now, for those of you that haven't heard, subtropical storm Nicole, I think is what they're calling it now, but it's supposed to be a hurricane by the time it lands near West Palm Beach. Wednesday evening, they're saying about 7 p.m., trackthetropics.com is the best place to go if you want to find all of the specific details about this hurricane. Now, some of the the basics on this, they have their own page, trackthetropics.com has its own tracking Nicole page where you can go find out all the specifics about this one storm. Apparently there's another investigation area called 97L. Usually there's not much going on with this website from November all the way through to September. But this is just crazy. Here's the, uh, the radar loop. All of a sudden, middle of nowhere, out of just thin air, a hurricane heading directly for Florida. Absolutely bizarre. And the weather here, northeast coast of Florida, today, 79.2 degrees. We have winds east-northeast 3.1, gusting 5.8. That's basically just a light breeze. It's a little cooler today than it has been, but we've had bright, sunshiny skies on and off, so we haven't seen much of this yet, but this is the hilarious part about this. After the last hurricane, the one that hit southwest Florida, this is their, uh, their cone of unpredictability. Meaning they're saying this could hit anywhere from North Carolina to Cuba. I mean, at this point, why bother? Why bother? If you're going to have a cone this big, I mean, why, why give it color codes? I mean, at this point, they're saying, yeah, it seems like it's likely going to go to southwest Florida. But you put that up next to this line, which, like I said, here's Lake Okeechobee. Go, go look at the intercoastal where they have this line going. It's literally right over Mar-a-Lago. Now, there's a very strange thing that occurs during hurricanes that I think goes right along with something that's going to be spoken of in the context of the election. It's the whole capitalism, free markets versus socialism argument. Well, everybody decides to hop into their emotional brain whenever one of these storms hits and confuse people and say, we're going to have anti-price gouging laws. Now, this is the one, of course, for Ian, 
the graphic that they used. Basically, you can't charge more than a certain price for certain things during a certain time. Now, you don't have to sell anything if you don't want to, technically, given the fact that there's a storm coming. So basically what they're saying is this. You're entitled to a little profit, but not a lot of profit. Meaning that during normal times, you can charge whatever you believe the market will bear. But if there's a storm coming, no. No, you have to take the 30-day average, and then you can't go beyond a certain range of it. Now, some might say, well, Florida Maquis, that's fair. That's fair? Is, is that the root of capitalism and, and free market economies, to be fair? To treat people fairly? It's a very, very odd thing. And it's very irrational. But of course, because you have something like a storm coming, you can think of all the, oh, the poor people that might be trapped because of the rain and the wind and all this stuff. You see, it's just an excuse for those who don't want to be in control of their minds to literally do things the exact opposite of what they would counsel others to do. I get this all the time, Florida Monkey, you're some kind of socialist. I'm like, no, I'm just entirely aware of the amount of socialism that is already baked into our country that people benefit from every single day while out of their mouths decrying the evils of socialism, even though they live under it every single day. And they live under the benefits of it every single day. I had a person in a comment come to me and say, Florida Mecky, oh, by the way, real quick, let's see if we can, uh, here's the spaghetti models right here. The main line takes it right here. That's the black one. This is the average of all the lines. And if you track this and you go look at this on a map, you go down to West Palm, it's right here. In fact, this is, this is Mar-a-Lago right here. Palmsicle Island, um, Bingham Island Audubon Preserve. That's what you want to look for. There's a 20-mile uh, bend line that if you road, if you take it all the way out here, just south of Lake Okeechobee, it's exactly where this is going. But anyway, I had a commenter that was talking about, you know, those people coming here from Cuba and all these other places, you know, they're not coming here saying very good things about socialism. Well, the very idea that they think they can get in a boat and come here, and that when they arrive, they will have certain rights and certain protections, and that they will, at no cost of their own, be fed and be clothed, and be housed, and have medical care applied if necessary, and then there'll be all sorts of social benefits for them, like food stamps, and housing assistance, and oh, by the way, if they do somehow become citizens, they'll have to sign up for selective service, they'll have to pay taxes for the rest of their life. All of these very strange socialist things that they say they're fleeing, they will be subject to here. And they will be beneficiaries of here. You'd have to ask yourself why they would not think in a, in a capitalist society, why it wouldn't make just good sense to turn them over as slaves to big business. Ask yourself the question, where does all that money come from? Oh, and oh, by the way, to put the cherry on that cake. When they get here, guess what's going to happen? They're going to be inoculated. That's right. MMR and many other things, whether they like it or not. And their kids will be as well. And I very doubt, very much doubt they're going to come here, all these Cuban fleeing socialism people. Guess what? Their kids are going to go into public schools mandatorily whether they want them to or not. It's a law. 
the, and even if you would say, well, maybe they have some money and can put them in private school, even private schools are regulated and have standards. Let's say they want to come here and they want to start a business. Guess what? Guess who's going to be in charge of that business? Getting it stood up. Anybody who's ever started a business anywhere in this country knows what I'm talking about. The fees, the regulations, the approvals, the inspections, the regulation. I mean, it is literally a giant exercise in government socialism. Big government socialism. So, really very odd to make the allegation that people fleeing, what they're fleeing in Cuba, what they're fleeing in these places is poverty due to corruption. What they're fleeing is poverty due to corruption. And we have a great deal of poverty due to corruption here. In fact, if they arrive in Florida, they're going to learn real fast. You know what the... While the number one moneymaker for the state of Florida is, of course, tourism. But do you know why we have that level of tourism? Because everything is clean and neat and nice and safe. And safe. Meaning the number two moneymaker for the state of Florida is prisons. And jails. Florida is not, I would say, of all the states of the Union... It is the last place you want to come crossways with the law. And that's the ultimate socialist plot right there. I mean, we could probably do a whole video on how those who were in charge of Germany in the early 1940s would look at the villages in Florida as a model community. Yes, that's right. Those who were in charge of Germany in, say, 1935 to 1944-ish would have looked at the villages, Florida, as a model community. Everybody living in basically the same kind of house. 97% all the same demographic. Everybody driving golf carts. Little, tiny, inexpensive things to bebop around in. Homeowners associations. One way of doing things. Their way. The only way. And that's it. No one else welcome. No outsiders welcome. They would have loved this place. But people don't think about it in that context. It was the goal. It was their goal. So, Anyway, those of you who are patiently waiting over at Patreon, we got a doozy coming. We got an absolute doozy coming, and we're going to kind of touch on something that we touched on, oh, probably six months or so ago, but we're going to bring it back now for the election, because it's a big deal. It's moral relativism, and what aboutism? And for those of you who are curious, wasn't it only about two years ago that virtually every person out there who was disappointed in the election results in 2020 said, that's it? I'm done with the Republican Party. I'm never voting Republican again. The Republican this, the Republican that, blah, 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 blah. Because of what happened from November 2020 to early 2021. Now, only two short years later, it's party time central. Republican red wave across the country. Hmm. Very strange, isn't it? How psychology can just flip things. And that's basically the idea that we've had two years of things getting a heck of a lot worse. And now, relatively speaking, relatively speaking, it seems like it's a much better choice. It's moral, psychological relativism. So ask yourself a question. Who benefited the most from things going south the last two years badly who benefited the most that's right so who maybe might have had a vested interest in things going that way yep but we'll get a lot deeper into it over at patreon so anyway um i guess we'll keep an eye on what's going on 
in the South Florida, where I'm at, seems to be out of the cone of really all that much concern. So uh, no real big worries here other than just some rain. But anyway, God bless. Like, share, subscribe. We'll see you guys next time.